Crystal Soul Family and welcome back to On Another Level. And today, today is a beautiful message. Um, Divine Spirit is telling me <clears throat> to do this message and it is indeed called the good news. Now when we hear the good news, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? When I hear about the good news, what comes to mind for me is something that is, is expressed. <clears throat> it is a testimony. It is, it is, um, when I hear good news, what automatically comes to me is someone expressing truth. Now, interesting enough, in the world, you have to try to, you have to not try, but you have to use your discernment um, to determine what is exactly good news about an event. So good news in the world could be about boasting, okay? Um, it's a 50-50 shot in whether it's going to be of truth or not of truth. The Divine Spirit was telling me to do this message about the good news because when it's about the Bible, it is good news of truth. Now good news, when it's in terms of the Bible, can either make your heart sing, can make you be in praise, can get you excited. Could nurture your soul. Can restore your faith, can build it up even. The good news from the Bible. Ah. Oh. will move you to sing hallelujah. The good news of the Bible will help you to see what it is that your ancestors, your soul family, have gone through, have come in, gone through, and have come out. There is a completion. And the good news, which is the truth, is not just of, it's not one-sided. It's not just of the good people, and it's not just of the bad people. But it's of both. It gives you a full picture. What's so marvelous, beautiful soul family, is that as I close my eyes, Divine Spirit is showing me the different uh, events taking place. Because those that write these events are blessed with the Holy Spirit. And what's so interesting is they're sharing their testimony. The Holy Spirit is speaking to them, through them, because it's with them, right? Coming in, going through, and coming out. They're not doing it on their own uh, will. It, it mean power. They're, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that helps them to endure, that helps them to be healed, that teaches them that sets them free.
And it's the same Holy Spirit acting today. And it's not really acting. I don't want to use that word. But it's the Holy Spirit. And it's natural flow today. And as you are filled with the Holy Spirit because you've made your decision, you willingly chose, you said, and said, God Almighty, there is no one above you. No one can separate you. No one can defeat you. Nothing can substitute you. You are our God, and we are your people. You see, when you're able to say that and feel good in it, that is the good news. That is what the good news, that is what the Bible does to you. Now, Divine Spirit was also telling me that even though you think and know the Bible to be good news because you're matching that energy the energy of the prophets the energy of the Holy Spirit that is found in each of these people of God you are able to relate to them you're able to relate to their struggle you're able to relate to the times of hunger, times of thirst, times of pain. Because the wicked do not do anything different. So the wicked don't do, don't do anything. I had to change my, my camera. So the wicked, they don't do anything different, beautiful soul family. And so as you're able to read, as you read the Bible, you're able to, to connect. You're able to say, okay, wow, yes, they don't do anything new, but I can see that because my soul family made it through, I will make it through too. I understand that this good news of the Bible is a double-edged sword indeed. Because those who hear it can be healed. But there are others that hear it. Oh, they are disturbed. They are greatly disturbed. They're disturbed by the energy of the Holy Spirit. And so what's so interesting is that the world is disturbed by the Holy Spirit. But they're not disturbed by the spirit of the hand of Christ. Okay? So <clears throat> the Divine Spirit was telling me that... Uh, You may be happy with what you hear about the Word of God, but everyone else is not. And this is a time frame of understanding energy. <clears throat> and so, well, anyways, the energy is of love. See, God is love. And as you look at the world, the world is caught up in lust. I brought this out, I spoke about the scripture, and it was talking about the Israelites that um, were complaining about their hardships. And then after that, they still complained. They, they were, they were uh, comparing the provisions of God to the provisions of the Egyptians. 
And God was very angered by that. <clears throat> so God, of course, provided them quail, a month of quail. So much quail, since they want meat, right? And so <clears throat> the quail is the meat that they were looking for. They bit upon that meat and it died. And that's the lust of the world. It was because of the lust of the world. So the lust of the world is different than the love of God. See, the love of God was bringing forth the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The love of God was bringing forth manna on the dew in the morning. And they were to only take for that day. Not an overflow. Not, you see, people take more than what they should because of fear. And that is not of God. When you have a sound mind, you take enough for the day. And so the Israelites came to learn different lessons. And we learned those lessons, right? We gleaned that wisdom. Divine Spirit is telling me there are people who read the Bible and they are strengthened. And they hold themselves accountable. But then there are those who read the Bible and they can and they they're like, okay, this is this is a time that we are able to do such things. This is how we can get over on others because they just simply do not know. There are people who read the Bible to see what they can get away with, as if you can get away with anything. <laughs> it's really interesting, but it's all it's to show you. There are people who, who read, if, when you're of God, you see, what's so interesting, we're dealing with two spirits here. We're dealing with the spirit of the Holy Spirit, right? And we're also dealing with the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, when we go into prayer, Divine Spirit is telling me go into prayer with, in spirit and truth. And that lies. Doesn't make any sense to do that. It's din dishonoring. When you're in the spirit of truth, and you read the Bible. You're hearing what God is saying. You're connecting more, you're strengthened, you're nourished. Now, as mentioned, there's another spirit roaming, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist. And so <clears throat> when these people read the Bible, because they do read the Bible, understand that. They're getting a different side. They're not seeing what you're seeing. They're seeing, this is what my ancestor did and I'm going to do it too. They're seeing, this is what my ancestor went through and so I'm going to bring about vengeance. They're angered by what they see. And so that's why for so long they tried to hide the Bible, try to take away books out of the Bible. It has come under a great attack. The body of Christ came under a great attack and was tested. The word of God is coming under great attacks and is tested. And beautiful soul family. Could you really expect there to be a difference in reference to you? 
You will come under attack. You will be tested. But fear not. For God is with us. And that is what we read about and come to know when we read the Bible. We're strengthened. We're encouraged. Now there are some people who do not like to read the Bible because they see certain things that bring forth question. But you have to understand there are slaves and there are masters. And for some time this world has been seeing and saying masters were of a certain race. You see, beautiful soul family, the earth is our home. And we have not been rejected. But there are those who have been. There is a bloodline who has been. There is a seed who has been rejected for what they have done, their ancestors have done, and what they continue to do. And so because they don't change their ways, they will continue to be rejected by the earth and God Almighty. You see, what's so beautiful about God is that Jehovah, Yahweh, sent His only begotten Son. To teach us. To heal us. And to release us from bondage. And those who make the necessary changes and call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. And it goes beyond ethnicity, gender, <clears throat> financial status, stature. It goes beyond all of that. Because it's about your soul. So when you call upon the name of the Lord, you make the necessary changes. You shall be saved. And that's the beauty of God. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the author and the finisher. Okay? And so, also, when you see the world, how, how are you with the world? Are you happy with the things that are taking place? Are you relieved? That is a telltale sign. With your actions, as you've made those actions, how do you feel? Do you feel like things are finally put into order? The Vice Spirit was telling me that when it comes to the body and there's pain and affliction in the body, isn't the whole body at unrest? And when the, um, when the point of the body that has been bruised and it comes to a point of healing, doesn't the whole body come into rest? My point is, is that In this time frame, are you in rest? Truly, take the self-examination. Close your eyes even. As I'm in this, am I at rest? Do I feel good in what's going on? Or am I disturbed? That helps you to understand what spirit you are in. 
If you feel like the government and the world is doing everything right and that we have to do such things in order to have order in life, like you're hanging on every word and you believe it to be true, that's in the world. You see, there's different energies at play here. There's the world's news and then there's the good news. Which one are you embracing? Which one are you taking joy in? And that's up to you. Today's reading is from Isaiah 47, verse 48. Actually, let me see. I say Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 48. There's no 48. Why would I say that? Anyways, it's Isaiah 47 and Isaiah 48. And these two chapters, um, I encourage you to read. Because it really is an eye opener. No further ado, let's get into the Bible. Reading Isaiah chapter 47 and Isaiah chapter 48. <clears throat> Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the milestones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance, and given them into thine hand. <clears throat> thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient vast thou very heavily laid thy yoke and thou saidest i shall be a lady forever for that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart neither didst remember the latter end of it therefore hear now this thou that art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude um, of thy so uh, sorceries, and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall ev evil come upon thee. Thou shalt know, shall not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art worried, in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly pro prognostic prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them, 
they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants. From thy youth they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. And so now we're going to the next, which is 48. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. For they call themselves of the holy city, and say and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth. And I showed them, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that art obstinate, and thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee. Lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol have done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Th thou hast heard, see all this, and will not yet declare it. I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou heard, heardest not, ye thou knowest not, yea, from the time that thine ear was not opened. For I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake, I, for my name's sake, will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory on to another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob. The vice priest is telling me go back. Okay. So verse 11. For mine own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob. And Israel, my called, I am he. I am the first, and I'm also the last. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye assemble yourselves in here, which among them have declared these things. I say again. All ye assemble yourself, and hear, which among them hath declared these things? The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure in Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the secret that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst Hearken to my commandments, exclamation mark. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. 
they thy seed also have been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me go ye forth of babylon flee ye from the chaldeans with a voice of singing declare ye tell this utter it even to the end of the earth say ye the lord hath redeemed his servant jacob and they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them he clave the rock also and the waters gushed out there is no peace save the lord unto the wicked and that is the reading of isaiah chapter 47 and isaiah chapter 48 what i've read here beautiful soul family is about the daughter of babylon which is also the daughter of the chaldeans both are called You know what? I think it's so interesting. It says, O virgin daughter of Babylon. And we know that whenever spoken of Babylon, it says the horrors of Babylon. But here it says virgin. Divine Spirit is telling me in this sense, they know not of God. I live a very abstinent life and um, I chose to be celibate. And it is so interesting. When I see virgin daughter of Babylon, what I'm seeing is abstinent, they're abstinent from the word of God. They're abstinent of truth. And they're celibate when it comes to God Almighty. But they fully embrace ways of the world okay matter of fact they are the world <laughs> they are the foundations of the world and so what's so interesting is that love does not tempt the wicked are not tempted by love the wicked are not tempted by goodness they wholeheartedly do what they do there is no conflict within themselves <laughs> they don't abstain what like I said When it comes to God, they are considered virgins. Because I was like, wait a second, how can they be virgins? And here it talks about how so much mockery is done. How they themselves call themselves, I am God. Pharaoh saw himself as such. But they saw themselves as God that comes against the Almighty. Yeshua stated, if I am of the devil, if I am of Beelzebub, Beelzebub will not come against itself. Okay? And so the thing about it is to understand that the Pharaoh who thought he was God was coming against God Almighty when it came time to let the Israelites go. So what does that tell you? It's the same thing about old daughter, virgin daughter of Babylon and the Chaldeans, the daughter of the Chaldeans. They themselves think that they are God and there is no other. That is the difference. Okay? Great is God that is within us. 
than that of which is in the world. Okay? God is with us. We are the children of God. We reflect the image of God. Now, what's so interesting is that they will want you to worship an image. But see, as we focus on God the Almighty, we reflect the image of God and the likeness thereof. We don't worship images. You see, there's a difference. Hopefully I'm trying to transfer this over correctly. <sighs> Anyways, beautiful soul family. Here in 48, it doesn't also it doesn't just talk about the daughter of Babylon and the daughter of the Chaldeans. Sadly enough, it also talks about there are those of the Israelites. Here it says and make mention of God of okay so here it says and are come forth out of the waters of Judah which swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of God of Israel but not in truth nor in righteousness and they are no different than a daughter of Babylon and a daughter of Chaldean but because of God Almighty and who God is, He remembers those who do accordingly. And this is why you have to understand, well, what spirit am I a part of? There are people who, are the, who have the Holy Spirit and can read this and say, and see good things, see justice. And there are those who are the spirit of the Antichrist and could read these same two chapters and feel dreaded. The thing about it is, is that we are to hold ourselves accountable. And we are to say, okay, what do I need to edge out of my life? Because this is not just about the daughter of Babylon, O oh daughter of Chaldeans, but this is also about those who come from the waters of Judah. Are you coming to understand and read and say, I'm making the necessary changes in my life. I bring myself to repentance. Are you angered even the more? It says, oh, thou that hadst hearkened to my commandments. Oh, those who hearken to my commandments and make the necessary changes. And to see, the, the Bible will always be a double-edged sword. The sword of truth that brings forth justice. And also the sword of truth that tears down. And a lot is said within these two chapters. What spirit are you of? Are you the spirit? Are you of the spirit of the Holy Spirit, or which is part, which is in the body of Christ? As mentioned before, as you're in these time frames, is anything that's happening today is it bringing forth hindrance to you? Is it making you like? Is it bringing forth any change? Is it as you look at these time frames? Are you having joy in what's happening to people? Or is it is it something that's helping you to waking up to what's going on? The injustices. Now, mind you, the Bible says when you look at these times, take joy. Yes, but not take joy in seeing that the world is on a righteous path. Take joy in seeing that the kingdom is drawing near when you are a citizen of the kingdom and not a citizen of the world you can take joy in understanding that the foolishness the injustices 
the abominations, hallelujah, they will come to an end very soon. But if you're of the world, you're going to be thinking, finally, you're going to be a vengeance. You're going to be, these people deserve this. You're going to think that everything is fine. So what spirit are you of? Do you even think you need to make certain changes in your life? And that's for you to answer. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. Namaste. Peace. Shalom. May all the glory, honor, and praise go to Jehovah. In Jesus' name.